Hey guys, this is, this, is, this is Mr. V, and this is Apes Review Video Topic 6.7, Energy from Biomass. So when we're talking about biomass, uh, the idea is that the primary use of biomass is to burn it for heat, right? It's typically something that would use that would be used to produce heat in a home, okay? Um, now, the downside is when you do burn this stuff, you are exposing yourself to these undesirable byproducts, and of course, it also depends on the material itself. You know, some places have uh, been known to burn uh, trash, or, or which contain, contains a lot of plastic, and those can end up uh, harming the respiratory systems of the people uh, living in, in the immediate vicinity. So there are benefits, of course. The first benefit is that it's going to provide heat energy, and you know, so more advanced heating may not be available. Um, you know, if there's a situation where uh, wind or solar or uh, gas or fossil fuels are not available close by, then biomass may be the easiest thing because it's easily reachable. An individual could harvest that, use it for their home, um, and then have it available to them when needed. Um, and the other upside is that it doesn't add additional carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So if you are growing a plant for a while and then you burn that plant, yes, you are releasing CO2 in the atmosphere, but it's not any CO2 that was not already in the atmosphere. If you were burning fossil fuels, that would be CO2 that had been stored away for millions of years and we're releasing extra. Now, we are, um, in our case, in, in the idea of burning biomass is you're now um, only burning what was in the atmosphere, so you're keeping it in balance. So that's a benefit as well. Now, of course, there are drawbacks. Um, when you release this stuff, and you, when you burn this in uh, cl close proximity to yourself, you end up releasing all kinds of uh, chemicals into the air. So the first is carbon dioxide, which is technically not a pollutant. Um, it uh, is a greenhouse gas. and um, But then you're also releasing carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides or NOx chemicals, particulate matter, and these other ones called VOCs. So that can be a, a contributor to uh, creating tropospheric ozone. We're going to go over those processes later on in units uh, 7, 8, and 9 uh, with climate change, global change, and um, air pollution. So you'll be seeing a lot more of this, but th that's one of the drawbacks, or these are the, the big drawbacks of burning biomass close by. Now, of course, you don't have to just burn the biomass um, to create heat. You can also use it uh, in uh, through fermentation. You can create uh, gasolines and fuels from there. Okay, so you have macroalgae that can be used, and using that um, algae through hydrolysis and fermentation, you can cause or you can create uh, bioethanol, which is great. Um, so you you get solid biomass as well, but you can also create bioethanol, which now is what you see in vehicles and things like that, and can be used as a fuel. So, you know, if you live in an area where bioethanol is uh, an option. You could probably see a gas station that would be it runs on E85. Okay, if your car can run on E85, that's ethanol, 85% made from plants. Um, so that's a good option. You can make that from algae, or you can also make it from corn. Uh, so corn is a very high energy molecule, and of course it can be milled. You create these uh, slurries, and they uh, what they do are slurries. And what you'll do is you have to liquefy it first and kind of let it uh, mash and ferment. And then from there, you do a process called distillation. Okay, uh, Distillation is basically separation of the products by boiling point. And once those products are separated, you can put it through a little molecular sieve, which means basically you're, you're putting the layers out and you can collect the ethanol and that can be transported to market and used as a fuel, just like the algae ethanol. The, uh, now, of course, that's cool because just like the algae, these things were taking in carbon before. And when you burn them, yes, you are still burning and releasing CO2, but you're not adding more that was already in the atmosphere than was already before. So that's an important thing to think about. Okay. Now, of course, there's downsides. The energy return is low. So, of course, you're not going to get as much, uh, if, you're, if you're running a car on ethanol, it's not going to get as much mileage as a car running on typical fossil fuels like oil. Okay. And then the big argument is if you use, in the case of corn, that for fuel, you're diverting food away from people that might need it. So, you know, there are uh, the case of many uh, countries or areas around the world that are food deprived. And if you're growing food simply for the purpose of making fuel, um, 
you know, there's some ethical and uh, and moral arguments to be made there. And of course, it can be an expensive process. So um, that's going to be one of the downsides um, of using this process. So here's some other resources you can use. Hopefully these will be helpful. Um, and hopefully this was helpful. So thank you very much.